it's Angela Irene with Aged Goodness. Thank you again for joining us today. We really appreciate it. Today we're going to do things a little bit different. We've had a lot of questions about how do we process, you know, what happens before, you know, we show the video. Well, let's do that today. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is open this box. This one is 15.7 pounds of costume jewelry, arts and craft. Ooh, that should be interesting. All right, uh, we've already opened this. Okay, woohoo! We know that we have lining, yes, and bubble wrap. So for arts and crafts assortment, we'll have to be surprised and see what's in it. Okay, this is the very first step. I'll show you what comes up next. Moving on to phase two. After we open the box and find out, you know, kind of what we're dealing with, uh, lined, unlined, all of that good stuff, we move on to sorting. So this is the part of the box where we are untangling. We are getting the initial sort on. I sit on the couch with a couple of TV trays and a towel and I take the box apart and we see about, you know, what's, I mean, truly trash, you know, like screws, nuts, bolts. You know, we have found some weird things in these boxes. Um, you know, kid jewelry, Mardi Gras beads, that kind of stuff. And anything broken, missing stones, that kind of thing, that ends up in the craft lot. So this is our first line of defense to find out the good, the bad, the ugly of the box. And then from here, we move on to cleaning. All right, moving on to stage two. Okay, this is the part that generally takes the longest, and I really do this at the kitchen sink, but because it's not conducive for filming, we're gonna go ahead and simulate the jewelry cleaning here. Depending on the size of the box, this could take me a full day, a day and a half, especially with like a 25 or 30 pound box, because this is what I do for each piece. Um, if it is a regular uh, piece with no fabric or anything, it ends up getting, um, Put in a solution of Dawn Platinum. Hey Dawn, if you want to sponsor me, um, Platinum because it has the most detergent in there to work for you. But really, my saving grace for all of this would be a microfiber cloth. And really, if you just use water in a microfiber cloth, which you really should use for the majority of your jewelry, it does a great job. And then it gets rinsed and I have a cotton cloth that I use and I will just carefully kind of polish this baby up and look how sparkly and shiny and beautiful that is and that's just with Dawn. Um, if it is something more elaborate, um, you know, something that you definitely don't want to soak, say like a leather corded bracelet or something. A lot of times I will have a second cloth that I will use with just a very, very minute amount of the Dawn, or sometimes just water will take care of a lot of the stuff. Uh, earrings are a little bit different. I like to do hydrogen peroxide on the post, to make sure that's kind of all clean. And then they usually get the same kind of rinse. The the gamut of ways of cleaning between vinegar and baking powder, baking soda, you name it, it's been out there. But this is what works for us. And if you've bought any jewelry from us, you'll know it's clean, everything looks good, this stuff is great, and it's easy on the jewelry. The only thing I would not submerge would be something like uh, this, which would be rhinestones, especially older ones that, you know, like are pace based. Uh, water is not your friend here. I would do a very, very damp fiber cloth and go over them. You know, old brooches, old earrings, that kind of thing. You have to be a little more really mindful of what you're doing because you could ruin a piece of jewelry really effectively. But something like, you know, like this all metal bracelet would go perfect with this scenario. And with the kitchen sink, if, you know, you kind of work on each piece, you just kind of keep going. Uh, like I said, it could be a good day, day and a half, depending on how long this takes. Um, you may have a box with a thousand pieces in it, but each piece really does need to be clean. Uh, if you've seen our older videos, you know we've had really ucky black looking hands at the end of them. And that's really not what we want to show you guys. You guys want to see the jewelry. Well then let's make it look as beautiful as possible. All right, on to step three. 
after the hours and hours of cleaning are finished, we have everything sorted and laid out, ready to get filmed. After filming, everything will get individually bagged and filed away in the jewelry vault, ready to be sold. And that was the behind the scenes quick look at how we process a box. Now let's get to the jewelry. Well, now that we showed you a little bit of behind the scenes, let's take a look at some of the things that we found. All right, this would be, you know, the little bits and pieces that we have. This is, this is huge, look at this. This is a beautiful enhancer bale. Here's the enhancer back. Cross, it has beautiful rhinestones and it's pretty hefty. We have this great glass piece. Look at this pendant. I mean, with all this cool beadwork on the owl, our spirit animal, three random big glass beads were in here, and they have that shimmer and the shine, you know, almost, you know, almost a dichroic look, but not quite, but definitely the foil look in there. I think this might be like a banded agate pendant. This looks like brass, and this little rose in here is just to die for. This is a wonderful little, like, you know, I'm not sure. I think it's an iris. I'm not great with flowers, but I think it's an iris. Little pendant with some glass beads. Tinkerbell, or a fairy, but it looks like Tinkerbell to me. And then we have this one pair of cufflinks, but they look like they are shotgun shells. <laughs> Isn't that just like, I think that's wild. Boy, oh boy, we had some beautiful smalls. Okay, the first one, this one is marked origami owl and it has teacups and a tea kettle some music notes in here this would be an origami owl knockoff you can tell it is a little fatter it's a little easier to open and it has some beautiful charms in here 2017 and a gator just some really cool stuff this is a very dainty leah sophia piece with some you know pink and red rhinestones we think that'd be great for the holidays this is an NY piece. It is a classic pearl drop with the rhinestones around the rondelle at the top. This cute little gold bear, it's marked Korea. Everything that we have found that's marked Korea has a beautiful gold luster like nobody's business. No exception here. And this one has a newer CW. Um, and then when you turn it around, it's MC for Marsala. So we took a look at it. They're not connected, but from 2009 up, Marsala, or is it 2007? It's one of those two dates. Marsala started using a, an M and a C that were definitely separated and not together with that looping around C. So we think this is a newer mark for Marsala. It's not marked 925, but it's not magnetic either, so we'll have to give that a test. Hey, look here, two boxes in a row, and we found pins again. How cool is that? This one doesn't have anywhere near the amount of pins, but we beautiful pins. This is, you know, it's a newer pin. Someone created this. It has a commercial back on it. Uh, you know, it's just an acrylic leaf. Great for this time of year. This is a hefty piece here. This is a brass eagle with still a lot of beautiful paint still on it and blue rhinestones. You know, it is a hefty piece. You've got to wear this on a jacket. I don't think a sweater would, you know, be able to maintain this weight. This is a wonderful bow by Napier. Look at this sparkly frog. Miss Cindy, look at how cute he is. He has a little bit of silver issue on the back, which, you know, you'd never see. And I generally don't show pieces with, you know, condition issues, but he is so fabulous on this side that you know come on somebody could still wear that and then we had two of these i you know i always call these like uh, sweater collar you know pins it's a set so you've got the two that are connected with the chain which should go on both sides of the collar and you know so this is very feminine with the rhinestones and the mini pearls but this one here with like the reindeer i i'm assuming you know still sweater but I guess it could be like tie tack for a man also you know because this is sort of a masculine you know type of you know look so I think this could be both uh, male and female for this one this next group has some beautiful pieces too this is a fashion just a nice little long chain and faux stone 
This has a fantastic, look at this. This CZ is gorgeous on a nice, beautiful chain. We have, I thought it was silver. Uh, I don't think it is, it's not marked anymore, but it has a great look, like an older silver piece with the Tree of Life. Uh, you know, a little cute enamel dolphin. Doesn't quite have that fashion back, so it's a little more upscale than just, you know, one of your cheapy little dollar store ones. This key says fire. And this little bar pendant down here on the really nice silver chain is by Cookie Lee. And we had more marked pieces. This one is Charming Charlie with the three little glass drops. Beautiful green. This one is Georgiana. And it is just very delicate. This one is marked NY. And this rhinestone ball has the matching earrings, which is really nice to find. I can honestly say in all of the boxes we've ordered, I've never had mini brass knuckles. I mean, how cute is that? And it says made on there. How cute is this? I mean, yeah, cute, maybe, yeah, subjective. Uh, but the actual necklace is cute, how about that? And then we have a really, really nice Hello Kitty. Sometimes they're really, really yeah, cheap. And this one has very nice enameling and great rhinestones. This box gave us some beautiful smalls. This is a a really nice silver tone key nice substantial heart it has a little heart and a flower almost looks like the oopsie daisy logo but it's not quite and then the little green chip stone right here this has the black the plastic pink cat's eye beads and these really nice straight beads so it makes a really nice composition this one has that pilgrim made by danish look to it with the of varying flowers which is beautiful and very dainty 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 little plastic beads on a little drop the drop is about two inches so it is a nice little presence for something quite that small I certainly saved my favorite three smalls for the end of the small section this is a beautiful crystal that has a nice little drop of different gemstone chips this necklace is by Jewel Cade. This is our second time finding Jewel. This is certainly one of the major uh, money-making pieces in the box. And a beautiful locket. It has these, this pastel pink flower on the outside. Really beautiful interior. I don't know if this is scuffed or if a sticker was here, but I'm not gonna put any you know goof off kind of stuff on such, you know, on something so delicate. One of my favorite things to find in the boxes are pieces that are marked Japan. Uh, you always know they're older. They always have a, just a certain feel to them. And this one is a beautiful example of their glass beading. More times than not, if you find something marked Japan, it's going to be in the plastic uh, type family. These are all glass. And we have these swirl beads, these beads here. Uh, have a lot of texture to them. They almost remind you me of kind of like a pumpkin with the ribs. So I'm thinking these are pressed glass here. This is just absolutely gorgeous. Triple strand, beautiful, beautiful piece marked Japan. This one is Japan also. This is more traditional of what we tend to see. We have plastic pearls and these formed plastic beads almost kind of look like uh, roses the different types of the gold beads also again triple strand this is definitely um, more what we uh, tend to find we were fortunate enough to have a second set and these are um, most certainly pressed glass because you can see where some of them didn't quite release out of the molds and they still have some of the uh, extra the overage still in there and these are hand knotted. A few of them are starting to come undone, but I think someone could probably save that piece or certainly repurpose it. But again, these ones are glass. And this is a beautiful example. These are heavier, they're not glass pearls, but they are a heavier plastic pearl. The beading in between, and then these gorgeous, gorgeous peacock color beads. We were really fortunate. Normally we don't find pieces that have coordinating pieces or sets, but we did find a few. This is a very nice long fashion necklace 
with these wonderful green checkerboard faceted stations. And here are the matching earrings. So that was a nice find indeed. And then we ended up finding these earrings first. And then going through the box, we found this fabulous necklace. And it has a mark, and I can't, I can't find it to save my life. It's a P, and then a crown over a little O, and an F and a T. I don't know. So we'll be looking for that. But we had that set, which was great. This beautiful coral bracelet and earrings. And then we had this really fun, fun set. This bracelet has so many different rhinestones. It has the clear rhinestones and then the champagne color rhinestones and then the matching earrings. Earrings were plentiful too. We ended up with a great pair of enameled and silver tone hoops. These are pretty good size, but they're lightweight. So I think everyday wear is great. This Napier gold tone huggy hoop. Oh, these are hefty little pieces, let me tell you. Great little group here. And we have two Monet, the shell design and kind of this, uh, you know, just a geometric kind of look to it. I mean, that is great. We ended up with a few of the dyed stones, pink and teal. Great pair of pastel pink uh, glass. Those are gorgeous. Glass and shell. More of the dyed turquoise look. All very nice. These were just great representations. Okay, now these are fun as all get out. We have the pastel peach and guns. So these are the revolvers that are wrapped around in a vine with the roses. I think that's adorable. Great big rhinestones. This is a statement and a half. These are nice and big. Beautiful glass beads here. We can't be without our spirit animal. Really nice silver tone owls. We have the brass tone with tiger's eye. Very southwestern with the inlay, the flower drop, and the beautiful, I'm trying to have this be no glare here. I'm sorry if there's glare with the inside of the hearts. Those are gorgeous too. Two nice chunks of shell, probably abalone, with a little wood purple back behind it. Very cute. Okay, these butterflies are adorable. They've got the yellow and the purple enameling with the mother of pearl drop and the tiny, tiny pink drop. I mean, th these are just gorgeous. Some nice fashion pieces we have here. Just, you know, we ended up with a nice plethora. Nice plastic, nice lightweight. Just some really fun different designs. And it the amount of designs that we received in this box. I mean, there was quite an eclectic group also in this box, which is nice to see that we have a little bit of something for everyone. And the last two. Like I said, we had quite a few earrings in this one too. Also had a few nice surprises with the bracelets. All right, this one is Alex and Ani with the initial K, silver tone. And this one is Bella Ryan with Cupid. Both of these are uh, certainly nice little sellers. And then we found this one. This is Lulu Frost for Pop Sugar. And this is all over the board between $20 and $30, which was a really nice little find. And this little dainty one with this cute little hang tag, look at that little hang tag is La Sola, it's S A, excuse me, L A S O U L A. And I found quite a few little comps on this one and they were anywhere from 15 to $40 for this little tiny thing. Look how cute that is. So all four of these, nice little finds. Okay, the bracelets certainly bring home the eclectic group that this box had. 
this, I think, with it being so, so heavy, is probably dyed quartz, maybe? Although it does have a lot of pre-night look to it. But you can tell the matrixing, you know, it does have that look, but it's heavy, heavy, heavy. Gorgeous lapis beads. Look at the size of these beads. It is a stretch bracelet. It does have the nice dangle. This is just full on gorgeous. A set of three bangles and it still has its tags and whoever was selling this has a inventory number on it and they wanted $16 for these great rhinestone bracelets. We ended up with two different sets of bangles that are attached. And this group of attached bangles in that nice muted gold tone. And this one kind of has that like crushed diamond look on the outside of all of them. And they're both in the black and traditional diamond color, you know, the white color and gray. So both of those are gorgeous too. These two cuffs, similar design, just different color. And they're made up of uh, like five, seven, seven strands that are all connected. This is the green and white, and this has the citrine look, and they both look brand new. These two are very adorable. The brown one has the starfish, and the black one has the stork. And then we have everything from dyed shell to rhinestone, this one's glass. This multi-strand one here. Beautiful purple glass beads. This mint green, this kind of the smoky minty blue. These are plastic, but gorgeous. Nice beaded, you know, one of the ones you kind of roll on. Those are gorgeous. Leather and a little bit of wrapping in the cord. This looks like someone's homemade attempt here with rhinestones. This is uh, one of the only pieces we ended up with in the box that was more kid oriented. This Shambhala has a really cute skull. Just very, very tiny seed beads. Beautiful multi-strand stretch dyed shell. Those are gorgeous. Okay, this one, nice hefty glass pearls magnetic clasp that one is certainly an upgraded piece then we have more glass very faux beads so we have hematite and another hematite metal and this one says truth metal and glass beads more faux pearl these ones are glass these ones are plastic great bangles. This bangle has a little tassel drop. These two both have enamel. Then um, this one is a clamper. So we have this green clamper and this one is a true bangle. And the only other bangles we had in this box are all very, very nice. Um, we didn't end up with, you know, much in the way of really funky, junky jewelry. We do have broken and that will be coming up soon in the craft lock bag but for the most part we ended up with some very very nice jewelry or very very nice broken jewelry that's pretty much the, the theme of this box okay i don't normally share anything with wear and these to me almost look like snow shovel ends you know the shovel part but every other one is still shiny and every other one is dull so i don't know if that's by design or if someone had started taking the finish off I don't know, but it's still cute, no matter what. These are very lightweight, the multicolor with the little brass rings. I think you could wear those, you know, really for every day. They're very, very light. One of my favorites, the multi-strand, highly, highly cut and refractive small glass. And then these ones, this one has a nice big crystal drop beautiful rhinestone with the rhinestone heart drop isn't that beautiful another rhinestone fashion stretch another rhinestone this one has more of the uh, brass backing and here's my other fighting for the favorite here 
this Art Deco stretch. It is an older piece. You can tell by the um, threading they used in the back. And, you know, it just has that great look. Regardless of its age, it has a beautiful Art Deco look to it. And I love, love, love that one. We have two fashion. And I think these, you know, can be both bracelet or anklet. They've given you extra space with an extender. Nice, lightweight, plastic kind of filament pieces there. Those are gorgeous. Beautiful clamper. Great look to that one. Ended up with, let me grab these, some beautiful cuffs. You can hear them rolling around. Okay, this is one of the ones I showed in the beginning of the video with the cleaning. Look how sparkly that is, right? Gorgeous. Very, very subdued. Just a few rhinestones here. Nice presentation there. Every box has one. I'm telling you, every box has one of these. And this is a stretch rhinestone cuff. Isn't that, isn't that great? I love that. Very fashion, uh, very almost plastic, but not very lightweight. Someone put in some work here. Isn't that gorgeous? Beautiful. And then the last few we have, this one is on the verge of like kid jewelry. It's very lightweight, but not lightweight like kid jewelry. So it's still nice, but I think they just wanted to keep the weight down. Beautiful beaded stretch. Look at those. It has some rhinestones in it. It has these gorgeous little beads on it. Ugh, love this one. And the last one are nice blue iridescent, kind of the AB coating look to them on the slinky type of bracelet, as Lauren calls them. This is another classic plastic acrylic, nice long strand with both the amber colored beads and the black and gold tone. Does have an older style uh, barrel clasp, you know, so it goes right in with the design. Just a beautiful piece here too. Then let's move into some glass pieces. This is a tremendously heavy artisan crafted, it looks like, multi-strand, all glass bead necklace. That is a lot of glass beads right there. This one reminds me, <coughs> excuse me, as soon as I saw it, of the Partridge family bus with all of the really pretty colors. A nice graduated clear glass beads in between. It's just a beautiful piece. This is a stretch bracelet, a uh, stretch necklace, hello. Glass beads with the green. And these, I believe these ones are plastic, these kind of iridescent green. And then we move on to the crystal pieces too. So that is a really nice, kind of fun, funky piece too. This is plastic, certainly older style. Uh, I expected somewhere on here to be Japan or Hong Kong, but that one is not marked. Still very pretty. That's a nice vibrant blue. This box did have a lot of blue. This also looks artisan made with the glass pearls, the very tiny little seed beads. I mean, that is just really, really, really fun. Okay, boho certainly got represented here too. This purple dyed wood almost looks, these almost look like apple slices to me here. And that is really nice with the little detail with the bead floating in some of the other beads. Uh, purple is definitely not something you see in boho, so that was kind of a nice find. This is very similar to the orange, ooh, a hair, the orange necklace we had in the last box was multi-strand, had glass and wooden beads in it, and now we have it in green. Very nice little wooden stretch necklace. And this is always a nice classic style here, this kind of Cleopatra style with the seed beads, the multi-strand, the wooden beads. This one has a beautiful, beautiful color to it. Definitely um, fall. Oh, you can see this with a fall sweater. Faux bone. 
This feels very, very plastic. But the representation, I mean, if you do, you know, if you're vegan, don't want to wear anything that is actually animal related, I think this is a great option. This is gorgeous. Look at this one. We have all of these dyed halides. You know, you would move them like this and that, you know, to alternate the pattern. And it's heavy. You will definitely know when you're wearing this. So it's either the dyed halide or the um, magnesite, but I think it's halide. It has more of that blue and the brown versus the darker color. Then we have this great. It is a two strand, uh, three strand, sorry, seed bead and plastic pearl. And it's really long. This thing's probably eh, 42 inches. Nice color again for the fall, but it's a great transition into our pearl section because we did end up with a bunch of pearls. Okay, this long strand is probably six feet. They are a tad nicer than, you know, kid beads. They're lightweight plastic, but they have a much better color than, you know, like a child's plastic bead. These are glass, and these are probably around the 30 inch mark. Great color, great weight. You know you're wearing them. This is older. We have a much older class. It is showing some wear, but the pearls are gorgeous. They are glass, and they're more, certainly more of, you know, the ivory look, and they are beautiful. Very stunning, nice for evening wear. This is a multi-strand fashion. These are glass also. And it, with the nice chain addition, you won't feel like you're wearing a lot of weight. All right, if you've been with us a while, you know how I feel about these wires. Ooh, I'm not a fan of the illusion wires. I am, however, a fan of this really beautiful pendant. It's by NY. It has that abalone look with checkerboard faceting. I would take the rest of this off and keep the pendant. I really, really like the pendant. It's beautiful. Okay, we ended up with a new, one of these new head jewelry pieces. It Part of the tag is here, and then the tag is over here. It's BCBG. It was $6. We have that. All right, this silver tone necklace is gorgeous. However, the composition, I'm not real crazy about it. If you're going to wear the pendant where it should be worn, this clasp, which is nothing really special, will be right in view. I would take this and move it down over here. But overall though, it is a very nice piece of costume jewelry. I mean, it is nice and hefty. This one on the other scale, we're looking at probably 48 inches. Very lightweight, sparkles like nobody's business. I think that would be great, speaking of business, for business wear. This one is about 36 inches, 32, 36, if I had to guess. Has very reminiscent of a Brighton pattern going on with the rectangles here. And it's a nice piece. It has some weight to it, lots of sparkle, like that one too. This has fabulous composition. See if I can't get it from the clasp down. Okay. So we have everything from silver, gold, and like the black rhodium look. It is chunky. It has clankability. That is quite an interesting piece. If you like something, you know, different, you know, the off Fifth Avenue type, this would be a great one. This is really cute. It's still in the metal family here. The frog that's wrapped around a nice big piece of blue glass. And if big and bold is your scene, this necklace, boy, does it have you covered. We're talking multi-chain up top, these great big silver discs down at the bottom. And then take a look at these three rhinestones. Oh, here, where's my quarter? Look at this. We're talking nice big rhinestones. That is quite the statement piece indeed. 
All right, moving on to some daintier statement pieces. I'm gonna have to look this up. This doesn't have a tag, but it does have the little Florida Lee kind of dagger looking uh, dangle here. So I know that's a maker's mark for something. I just don't know what. And it has a very nice back. So it doesn't have, you know, the standard, uh, you know, really cheapy back. So that is made by somebody. This one is Charming Charlie. How cute is that little statement? You have to ignore our dog. She's having a little fit today. These earrings were also in the box. They look like they would have matched this. So I don't know if maybe this sat in the sun and faded. Maybe somebody, uh, you know, scrubbed it. But I think these would be close enough that um, it'd be a great little match. We have this beautiful glass bead graduated necklace that is just gorgeous. This is quite a piece. It certainly looks like, you know, Bakelite. I don't believe that it is. I think it's much newer, but it has this great carved shape. So I think that is a nice, a nice piece somebody would enjoy wearing. This has acacia shade, beautiful tree pendant. And I have seen just basic pendants, no name brand, you know, $30, $40. So I think somebody would really enjoy wearing that. We had one small, it ended up getting trapped beneath some necklaces. It is just silver tone. It has the two little rhinestone drops. So it, that is a really cute little piece. We have one statement necklace here in gold. I've seen a lot in silver lately, not so much gold. This one is a, an unbranded piece, but that great, you know, yellow, kind of screaming fall to me. I kind of like that one. This would be a Yik Fung bracelet. This one says true. It's in beautiful condition. I think somebody would enjoy that. All right, this one, ooh, long, long. Look how long this is. Long, 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 long. It's really, really heavy. It's not marked. It is beautiful, uh, silky quality. I think, you know, this could have had a Monet, Trafari, Napier tag on it. Uh, that is just drop dead gorgeous. So we have that piece. This is Coldwater Creek. We have, and these are not dyed shells. This is, it's plastic on, you know, the faux kind of leather cord, but it's still cold water creek. They have quite a little value. This one is cool jewels. And it has the, oh boy, they really don't want to turn over, do they? There they go. Cute little enameled dolphins. It's just the whole necklace has the little dolphins, all different colors. Although you're gonna have to take my word for it since they don't want to flip over. Yep, there it is. It's so cute. This very unique piece is by Cookie Lee and it's marked on the little tag here. So we have the chain cord, glass beads, and like the leather straps. That is quite a unique piece right here. And it's Cookie Lee. Great to have a nice marked piece. This one is by Bobble Bar. Boy, oh boy, this thing is massive and it is just full on hefty. It is the rose gold tone, you know, that copper look, double strand. I mean, it is uh, half a pound. I mean, it, it's full on hefty here. This one, great little statement. Love these colors. I think this would be great for fall. Uh, it's by J. Crew. Has nice little articulation. Nice bright colors. I mean, if you really want to have some pop, especially if you're wearing a monochrome shirt, this would be your color, let me tell you. Cute little pearl and silver tone beads. These are nice and gritty, you know, so you hope at this point that they're real. We're also hearing information that 
they're having pearls that are not gritty but real Ooh, tell me that's not going to be challenging to tell pretty soon it's just going to be pearl pearl like uh pearl-esque i mean that's how we're going to you know end up describing something Okay, this is another one of the probably money pieces in the box. This is Gemma Redo or Redux, depending on how you want to say it. I say Redo. This is a very fashion forward necklace, all different kinds of chains, and they come to the point where a drop would be, and that's where the drops of the chains become the pendant. So I have seen this. Uh, all over the board, you know, anywhere from $50 to $200. So I think if you asked, you know, $35, that would be a very reasonable price for this piece. Uh, very fashion forward and hefty. If you like pieces that are substantial, that would be a very, very good one to have. This one is by Ink, I-N-C. Okay, I am not a fan of, if you've watched this for any amount of time, I am not a fan of ribbon, fabric, anything like that being in jewelry. Uh, but in this piece, I don't say, you know, I, I don't hate it. It, It's okay. It's not my favorite. I still think it would stand nicely without it being on here. But these rhinestones are absolutely to die for. Nice, nice sapphire. A little bit of, you know, movement. No articulation. I mean, these are anchored to this piece but gorgeous, drop, drop dead gorgeous. Of course, we're gonna let you know about the craft. Okay, for a lot that had arts and crafts right in the title, I expected this to be so much worse. This was three pounds, 13 ounces, and that's not actually bad for a 15 pound box that had arts and crafts right in the title. Uh, beautiful things in here. Um, there is everything from glass beads to shell to you name it, it's in here. And for the oohs and ahs of the box, this is becoming less and less and less as the Goodwill employees are becoming certainly much better at pulling out uh, anything precious. We have one 925 chain, and it looks like, you know, just a regular little pendant chain. We have this very cute earring. I was so hoping we'd find the other one because it's pretty substantial. It's 925. It has cute little diamonds. Deeny diamonds, but they're diamonds nonetheless. This one is marked 925. Again, we're looking at a pendant chain and it has a really beautiful drop. The setting is 925 and inside is a crystal. And so on this side, the cutout is a heart, so it looks like a heart crystal. It's really a round one, but that's okay. <clears throat> These earrings are 14 karat gold filled and they are by Isle of Sky. And these are gorgeous. And these earrings here, I can't believe they made it through. They are 14K with this dark, 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 dark blue. I believe them to be sapphires. Gorgeous, gorgeous piece. So these were, you know, the precious metals in the box. We were very, very happy to have them. As always, we appreciate you liking, commenting, subscribing. We appreciate you being here. And for those of you that made it all the way to the end, we are going to have a giveaway coming up and we'd like some feedback from you. Uh, if you like something as simple as just a drawing, would you like something more elaborate like a scavenger hunt? Let us know what you would like because we would certainly like to have your input on that. Thank you so much again. We really appreciate it. Take care. We'll see you soon.